Hey, it's me again. We've got something bonkers today. Today we're going to be looking at the 40mm dump tank from Vaporgate, the Mason 40mm. I looked at the Mason 40mm um, RDA a while ago and it was something pretty special and it certainly got a hell of a lot of comments. So uh, now we've got, we well we just had to, we had to look at the tank version. Right, let's have a little blast of a cloud, shall we? You couldn't see enough there, could you? Let's see if we can figure that out. Hello ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we're going to be looking at something quite frankly bonkers. <laughs> um, I haven't recorded the intro yet so I may <laughs> I may say I've said it already but this is the 40mm dump tank from Vaporgate and would you just look at the size of that. That's on top of the Triad, a three battery mod and it is redonkulous. It really is. Um, now I reviewed the 40mm um, Mason RDA a while ago and it's still to this day the most popular video that I've done just because of the absurdity of the whole thing. It really is quite bonkers. Um, and so I had to, obviously I had to do the tank version just because it's, it's equally just crazy but at the same time I think it really is quite the feat of engineering to be able to create something that works that's this size and maintain the tolerances and so on necessary to create something that holds 17 mil of fluid and um, and vapes like a train now the build deck we'll see in a minute but that's huge as well this is not going to be for your single coilers mouth to lungers or little little kind of dinky little coils that is not going to happen you ain't getting a micro coil in here and getting a good good workout now uh, let's have a little toot shall we and uh, crack on this is a cheeky 110 watts with a 0 0.35 coil that i'll install in the uh, in the up close oh bit of time travel It's just bonkers, it really is. That really is just clouds for days. And it's actually a pretty decent flavour as well. Now I've got that wide open at the moment, but, uh, but yeah, anyway, before I gush a little bit too much, let's dive down in the up close and I'll talk you through it and try and get rid of some of this vapour. <laughs> Alrighty then, so here we are up close with the Mason Dump Tank 40mm and this thing is just a bonkers. So uh, just have a quick squeeze around the packaging there, nothing super exciting to get yourselves all in a tizzy about. Um, there we've got a little bit of information there, you can see it holds a whopping 17ml of juice which is just crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, spin top juice, uh, juice fill, two post configuration. All this sort of good stuff, but you can have a little look on there if you want to pause it. Now then, opening this up, I can't remember if these were underneath or on the top of the packaging, but we'll come back to this packet in a second. For this one though, here we've just got an extra um, chunky o-ring there, an extra 510 pin kicking over there, insulator and a few post screws to worry about in there. Obviously I've not had to uh, have any kind of reason to open those up, so they are what they are. Now here is the beast in all its glory. A clear, a, a spare tank here. Now these are something that are actually quite difficult to get made apparently because of the size of it, the thickness. This isn't a piece of glass that generally is kind of a mass produced thing uh, by all accounts. So uh, yeah, this is where some of that value goes because that is a big thick lump of glass right there. So now let's crack into the tank itself and get out of the thing. Here we go. Now, this is just mind-blowing with size. I thought I'd uh, show you a couple of comparisons just to kind of give you a, a feel for it. 
There's a 22 mil Kennedy RDA. <laughs> <laughs> There's a goblin tank. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. It really is absolutely bonkers. In fact, even the goblin with the extension is still <laughs> smaller. Than <laughs> oh, it's crazy. It's brilliant. Love it. Anyway, right, let's crack into uh, what we've got to look at, shall we? First of all, we've got a removable drip tip going on there. There's a sort of a press fit going on there. I think this may be a Delrin affair, um, but there is actually the uh, O-ring inside the top cap there, which, uh, which um, kind of keeps hold of this, so it's not just press fit into the metal. Um, this section up here is due for heat sinking or heat si uh, to allow heat to come out um, and there is a Delrin sort of piece in there once again to help it not get ridiculously hot. Um, now what happens at the top here you'll see that there is a little um, a little sort of post going on there and the reason for that is it spins open like so. Uh, you may see some juice in there and what have you from when I've, uh, when I've been cleaning it. Um, to uh, to access the fill, the fill's going on there, that big single kidney shaped hole. Nothing has caused any issues getting juice down there. That's been absolutely fine and dandy. And you can see down here into the deck already. Now I'm gonna come back to this in a second because there's something important to be aware of. But uh, before I do that, let's just break this down fully, shall we? Now underneath here, what we do have is fully adjustable airflow control. Um, there is a stopper in there as well, so it just doesn't turn for days and uh, we've got the same on each side there underneath designed by Vaporgate and then we've got black BK for black number 1128 and we can unscrew that whole section to take these apart now then at the top here big big chimney section to worry about there you can see that that's nice and clean in there I didn't have any issues with the machine oil or anything like that you've got a slight dome slight kind of angled aspect to that top section which uh, which does help funnel the uh, the vapor in there like you wouldn't believe so that's cracking and you can see under here that the fill port has still got that kind of rubber seal going all the way down which is nice and reassuring so uh, yeah that's the top section then we've got the glass as we've already seen and this ladies and gentlemen is gentlemen gentlemen is the deck it's huge this is 30 mil i believe which is which well it's just it's just crazy it's absolutely ridiculous let's have a little look here yep so from the outside portion of that that's 30 from the outside of the posts you're looking at 23 so you've got uh, build space for days you can put whatever you fancy in there and it's uh, it's going to be fairly massive what we've got going on here is these are the airflow holes happening right here here are the wicking holes either side and uh, the juice goes down the glass down the side of the chimney and you can see that we've got those uh, those wick holes kicking over there but obviously you can see that we just have air for days which is bloody marvellous it really is um <laughs> well we can have more of a look at it when we go up top but there you go now the holes on these posts are massive as well while it looks like there's not a great deal of real estate either side of those i've not had any issue with um with tightening down uh wires and having kind of any issue with uh, with with threads or anything along those lines but uh, just have a little look at the sizing here so those hole sizes are nearly three mil, um, three mil round, which is a fair old chunk of space. Um, all in all, I think it's absolutely bonkers. It really, really is. Now then, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna put a quick build in here um, just to, to show you some stuff. But in a second, on well, let me show you this first, shall I? Um, one of the things I like about this top cap is because of the just the sheer size of this tank, um, you do. It's going to run into a whole bunch of different challenges uh, when compared to a smaller tank, because a smaller tank you need very tight tolerances. Um, but if you just have a sort of a, a small issue with your tolerances on a small tank, it's a small issue. Whereas if you make something go from this size to this size with the same issue, for instance, then this is going to cause a lot more of an issue. So I'll see if I can say issue a few more times. This is going to have a lot more of a problem because that size problem is, I'm not saying problem, that size challenge 
range is going to uh, is going to just be kind of you know oh twice the size nearly so um the tolerances in this are absolutely bonkers. Now, what we do have at the bottom here is we do have a nice uh, O-ring at the bottom, which helps this uh, this glass seat in here. And you will see that the glass does have a beveled edge. Now, sometimes I have found a couple of times that this has um, had a little bit of a leak just because of the amount of um, the amount of juice and the amount of pressure going down here. Um, I've had a couple of little leaks around that seam there. However, um, there's two things to go on there. First of all, if that does happen to you, which apparently doesn't happen to uh, to very many of them, try turning the tank upside down and where you go, and that, that can often fix the problem. However, Vaporgate are going to be doing some spaces around the end of next month that'll go underneath this O-ring here, which will help kind of get this even better seated. However, it's not a constant issue, and it's not something that uh, that happens a whole bunch of the time, but they've, they've listened to their customers already and have approached it with a, a, a solution. So I think that's brilliant and certainly something to be commended. Now, at the top here, we saw that we've got this spinning outy bit. Um, now, under here, we've got this um, seal which if I can try and get this out, come out you bugger. Oh, no, there we go. Right, this is where things get all juicy now. Um, okay, so this is a big old thick rubbery seal which really helps make sure you get a strong connection. But in here as well, you can see I'm moving around there, some spaces. Now you do get some extra spaces in this packaging as well. Um, you can see see one just floating around there, um, as well as another sort of thick bung and all that sort of good stuff as well. So what this spacer does is, should this top cap um, start to become a little bit loose or um, or a little bit wobbly, what you do is you just pop a spacer under there. It helps raise up the bung just enough to be able to really make a difference to make this top cap nice and snug when it closes together. And that really, really does make a hell of a difference because if you do find a leak, then quite a lot of the time that will be a vacuum issue. Um, and so, you know, by, by replacing this or by increasing the height of that, uh, of that bung just a little bit, what that'll do is that'll help really sort of make sure that vacuum remains how it should do when it comes to uh, putting it all together. Um, so yeah, that's that. I think that is a great little solution to uh, to an issue that some tanks will have, but uh, but you know it's certainly something that um, they they've addressed before it becomes a problem with uh, with this particular tank. So all in all, let me uh, let me just pull my things together and we will stick a build in here and uh, I'll show you what it's all about. I also need to change the battery on the camera. Right, see you in a second. All right, so here we are then with the uh, with the build deck, and what I'm going to do is just pop it onto my uh, my little build station thingy me jiggy here. Threading on that 510, absolutely spot on, and here we go. Now it's just when you see a picture like this or see a video like this, it's really really difficult to kind of get your head around the size of the build deck in comparison to uh, to kind of what you normally would use. So uh, let me just let me just show you this, which I think I think you'll get a kick out of this. You might like this. Should have prepared it, didn't. So that is the 30 mil dump tank. That is the Goblin Mini. <laughs> so yes, the <laughs> forty mil dump tank rather with the thirty mil build deck and the Goblin Mini. V, that's the uh, V V one I think or V two I don't know one of the two. But uh, but yeah, so <laughs> that sort of stuff just makes me giggle. Anyway, um, also to give you an indication, what I've done is I have already pre wrapped. Um, these little puppies, these are dual 26 gauge or 24 gauge, can't remember, um, with 34 gauge on the outside with a 4 mil ID. And I've got two of those. There's 12 wraps, I think I do on these. Um, so there's a lot of real estate there. And just to give you a kind of indication of size difference compared to a normal coil, 
Um, right there is a, I think that's a 10 wrap 24 gauge over uh, over three and a half mil, which is kind of a normal thing that I would do. Now then, why am I going a little bit, why, why does this go a little bit kind of soft focus now and then? I don't get it, I don't understand, but there we go. Um, so yeah, these are the puppies that I am gonna use today. Hopefully they're gonna fit and everything's gonna work out to be all fine and dandy. So let's give it a blast. Now what we've got in the uh, in the post holes there, um, the top of the screws, uh, Phillips heads. I, I would like to have seen maybe a, uh, a sort of a really deep um, kind of 1.3 mil or sorry 1.5 mil um, Allen head hole in there really so I could really get a strong purchase on it with uh, with something like one of these rather than uh, rather than a Phillips head screwdriver which historically I've, I've uh, stripped but um, so far I've not broken these so that's all good in the hood and then let's just open these up Okay, and you can see, is that going to focus? This is one of those coil master building rod thingies. That's the 4mm. And that is going on there just fine. So, let's get this bad boy in here and install, shall we? Now, the reason you want 4mm on this is because of wicking. Um, the size of the wick holes on here means that it will require a lot of cotton and if you don't have enough cotton in there it's going to leak like a mofo um, and so by having a four mil id coil uh, not only is it going to just it's just going to help with wicking all around but it's also going to ensure that you don't uh, you don't kind of lose a bunch of juice in the uh, in the wick holes very loose, not ideal, but hopefully this is just going to give you an indication of how I put this together. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward sticking this other coil in and then we'll come back in a second where uh, when we start to get the wick out. So that was the uh, just me installing that quick wick there. Now, or the uh, sorry, the coils there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to fire them up and uh, get them going evenly. And then, once we've done that, then we will worry about getting on the uh, on the old uh, getting on the wick in there. But one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to check the resistance on the coil master. Oh, sorry, no, I'm not. I'm going to check it just on the uh, the, the uh, what's it called? <laughs> the triad. There we go. I'm going to check it on there because it's a DNA 200. Okay then, so we've got them glowing reasonably evenly there and uh, we're now rocking up at 0 0.37, which I'm more than happy with. And if we press the uh, the old fire button there, the ramp up time isn't ridiculous on it either. And that's only 110 watts. So uh, yeah, that works working out really, really rather nicely. Now what I'm gonna have to do is wait for a second for these to cool down and then we'll worry about getting some wigs in there. Okay, so the wick I'm using today is just I've cut off a few sort of chunky strips of Muji. It's kind of about finger width there and I have stripped off the outer sides. Don't know why I do it, but it just it's just turned into a habit now. No idea why. 
Anyway, let's have a little kind of roll of that. I guess it's kind of a sort of a Scottish roll, but kind of I'm not I'm not intentionally doing that purely because it's uh, it's well I don't I'm not <laughs> just trying to get it in the hole. Um, now, uh, obviously, what I have done is I have locked this, so it's not going to auto fire when I've got my fingers on it because that would be a bad idea. And we'll poke this through here. Nice and snug in there. Similar kind of affair here. Like I say, I'm not doing a, a full Scottish roll and all that sort of malarkey, but uh, I guess it's, well, it's just cotton rolled into itself, really. It's a big long coil, I tell you. Okay, so once you've got your cotton in there like so, now we've got to get it into those holes and it's got to pack out nicely. So uh, we do want a reasonable amount of cotton going on there. Uh, so I am going to cut that about there and there, which is kind of in line with the uh, with the outer sort of casing-ish. Just to give a kind of a, an indication of how kind of wide that is. Oh, I might have done that one a little bit too short, but we'll see. Hopefully not. Should pay attention. Okie cokey, little screwdriver time. Now then, I am going to try and remain to keep this, um, keep this all as fluffy as possible. Give it a few flicks to really fluff it out. Try not to hit your actual coils, obviously. Okay, so keeping that all super fluffy like that, it does mean it looks a little bit of a mess right now, but that's all gonna help with wicking. So let's give this a little, uh, what I'm trying to do now is just give it a little bit of a bend underneath with the, with the screwdriver, and then be able to tuck that wick gently in there without compressing those nice fluffy cotton fibers. Might have been able to do with a little bit of a longer length of cotton, to be honest with you. But we'll see how we get on. And the same on this side. Now one of the nice things we'll see as we're doing that is this section here for the air is actually raised up a little bit. It's not flat with this. So if it does start, well, it will potentially start collecting a little bit of juice on the top there just because it does um, and condensation and all that sort of good jazz. So um, if it does do that, then the juice won't automatically go down the wick holes, which I think is a, is a cracking little idea. bit of a pull just so I can get a little bit more down into this one One of the little things, I press this in a little bit too much. Don't pack it in, just make sure it sort of goes in quite naturally and without any resistance. If it does kind of start giving you a little bit of grief, just um, pull it out and uh, and feed it in again slowly. But you can see why it was, it was uh, important to have those four mil coils in there because with the amount of wick that you comes out of those coils, it absolutely fills up those, uh, those juice channels. To be honest with you, I probably, 
um, because I wasn't thinking about what I was doing I was hoping to put four and a half mil ID in just so I could have even more wicking going on but uh, hopefully this is going to do the trick it looks as though everything should be fine and dandy so there we go now what I'm going to do now is get some juice what should we use what should we use what should we use Use some uh, bro trip from Grim Green. This juice all over here. Just starts to help the uh, help the wicking process if you give it a little bit of a head start, and also. Once you've got the wick around the coils and around that kind of area of the uh, of the of the wicking, once you've got the juice around the coils in the area of wicking rather, then um, if you give it a little bit of a gentle kind of pulse, it helps kind of really absorb a lot more, uh, a lot more e-liquid nice and quickly. As it is though, this is going to take a lot of juice. Might unlock the uh, unlock the tank. I've, I have put, had a couple of drips go down into the uh, into the air wells, but I'm not overly fussed at the minute, to be honest with you. I'll give that a clean up in a second. Right, and so based on that, take the camera up a little bit. Let's have a look and see how she chucks. Yeah, pretty damn well. So <laughs> let's get the uh, let's get the tank together, and we can give her a damn good vape. Let's take it off the. Uh, Take it off the mod a little bit, a little bit easier, I think. So you do need to make sure that that is all a nice and snug fit going on there. And then once you've done that, crack open your top. And this does hold 17 mil of juice, which is just bonkers. I'm not going to fill it up to the top, um, just because I'm not. <laughs> Close that down there. Drip tip on top. And away you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the uh, the uh, 40 mil dump tank from Vaporgate, all made. Let's go up top and have a vape. So that was the up close with the rather bonkers 40 mil dump tank from Vaporgate and I, I still cannot tell you how much I love this tank. Just everything about it is excessive and that's why I love it. It's a bold move to make something like this. It's really bold to be able to create something like this because it's a really, really niche product. Um, if you look at my review as on the 40 mil Mason, there's a lot of people just saying it's stupid. That's just ridiculous. There's no need for that. It's just daft. Um, and I kind of get it, but there is a need for it. Without these successes, without people that just kind of break boundaries and do something just out of this world, then we don't kind of get the fun stuff, you know? Like I, like I said a lot in the Mason 40 mil review, um, just having something fun and crazy and excessive and bonkers and just ridiculous is one thing but having something that's all of that and works really really well is something altogether different and uh, and I've got to say it does work really really well that space on the build deck allows you to put pretty much anything in there um, although go big or go home um, you've got uh, you've got plenty of space for wicking you can put the bell cap of the uh, of the of the chimney that goes over the top there's plenty of space there so it doesn't upset the the wicking that 
that's been thought of, um, as well as just, well, the formulation on the inside of the deck. And the flavour, and this is going to blow your mind now, but the flavour is not too shabby on there. You're creating potentially a lot of vapour anyway, and because of that, you're just getting a mouth explosion of flavour, and it's absolutely bonkers. Um, I mean, there is a lot of wiring that coils like these uh, that I put in in the up close there, and so because of that, you're going to need a lot of power to bang through it. So this isn't going on a single battery device and getting a decent vape from it. Um, not with these coils anyway. But uh, but no, it's it's really really quite spectacular. I'm having a vape. Now I've got the airflow closed off like a half a hole there, um, which you, can you see that? There we go. So I have closed that off about halfway, maybe a touch more, maybe more like a third. But uh, yeah, I mean, if I do open that up all the way, then it is just air for days. And that is just crazy. I look particularly special then. <laughs> Bags. <laughs> but yes, it's absolutely bonkers. Good, thick, dense, angry vapour um, with a pretty reasonable taste, or a good taste, should I say. Um, if you get the wicking right, it's not going to leak. If you get the uh, get the coil size right yeah, and get the right coil in there, you will get a great, great experience. This is not for a new starter, clearly. This is not for someone that doesn't know their way around building some decent coils, in my opinion. This is for someone that just wants to go crazy mad bonkers. Um, obviously, it's going to look a little bit funky on a whole bunch of mods. Uh, obviously, it's lifted a little bit up here because the triad has a sort of a plinth on the top, but I don't actually have anything else that's super wide in order to be able to get that kind of, get that kind of uh, um, event going on. Um, I know what I could try. I haven't actually tried this yet, but so we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. Stick with me. This should be suitably bonkers as well. <laughs> I'm going to fast forward through this bit. Oh. Oh no, I was going to put it on my Monster Creosity Creations 26650 um, Base City Vapor Stacked mod, but I've just looked down the bottom there and I've lost the firing pin. <laughs> oh no, got it. Anyway, right, so we'll have to stick with it on the triad for the time being, but never mind. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy built. It's just, it's excessive. It's huge. And because of all of that, because of the specialist parts going on here, um, because of the specialist sort of um, aspects to making the glass and the machining and all that sort of jazz, it's going to mean that it's not a cheap RDA um, or RTA rather. Um, and because of that, on the Vaporgate or VaporgateJuice.com website, it's $75, which to be fair, is still pretty reasonable for the amount of work gone into this. And like I say, it's not going to be for everybody. There's going to be a lot of people I know already that are going to say a whole bunch of negative stuff in the comments. And quite frankly, I don't care because I think this is just so brilliant. It's ridiculous. Now they do come in this kind of um, smoky, kind of dark black, sort of smoky dark grey kind of colour. Um, but at the same time, there is also a stainless steel version as well. If you really want to stand out and make a statement, be aware that if you're using three milligram juice, it won't take long to get nicked out on this. So uh, a little bit of zero is no bad thing. But I just, yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm gushing now because I think it's so ridiculous that it's brilliant. That's a lovely warm vape going on there. Just loads. It. <laughs> oh, look at it though. Look at it. 
How awesome is that? 17 mil of juice, ladies and gentlemen. 17 mil of juice. Obviously, if you do want to put a smaller coil in there that's not quite so bonkers, as long as you've got that four to four and a half mil ID coil in there, it will allow you to uh, get through less juice because you'll produce kind of less vapor, close the airflow up and all that sort of stuff, and you'll get more of a sensible vape from it. Um, with uh, with a 17 mil juice capacity, which is crazy, um, and so you, that that would be a kind of a thing that you could go out with that setup, and that'd last you a day. That would be crazy. Even a short pull on that, and that's that's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant so well done Vaporgate I think it's a brilliant brilliant product I uh, would definitely go out and buy another one of these if this broke or I lost it um, just because I think it's it's just so crazy it's it's you, <laughs> <laughs> any hobbyist vapor that kind of wants to have something fun um, and something that is just mind-blowing then <laughs> <laughs> something like this if you've got the money to spend on it it's absolutely worth having and by the way that's it next to a 30 mil big buddha v2 <laughs> it is great <laughs> Uh, kinds for days right <laughs> and on that i'm now going to go and record the pre-intro intro, intro. <laughs> but thanks very much for watching i've been dean the vaping biker this has been the absolutely stunning bonkers crazy mental <laughs> thing <laughs> that is the uh the vapor gate dump tank or the mason dump tank 40 mil thank you very very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this if nothing else and uh yeah Look forward to reading the comments. I imagine there's going to be some varied ones down below. I'll put all the links in the description as uh, as usual. But uh, as for now, catch you later, people. Thank you very much for watching. Have it very, very large. <laughs>